Uh, hello guys, welcome back to the channel. Got something good to watch today, and we want to try and um, enter into the world of a molting spider. And what we're going to show you now is um, our adult female Nando chromatis, the Brazilian red and white, and we managed to catch her actually in a molt. And what we've done is we filmed this, and we've now speeded it up about 20 times because it took about three and a half hours for her to achieve the full mole. So, without further ado, let's go and see how she gets on. See you soon. So here we have our adult Nando Chromatis, the Brazilian red and white. And as you can see there, she's in the process of beginning her mole. Now just before they start this molt, they lay down a wet blanket, which you can see there, and she is now laying on her back. Now, it would have taken her possibly maybe 24 hours for her to actually create the web mat, and then it took some time before she flipped herself over onto her back. Now the reason they go onto their back is because, as you can see there, she is pulsating her body. So she's trying to actually force the old exoskeleton off because she has built a new one underneath it. So what they do there is they actually create um, a cuticle layer between the old skin and the new skin. And this is why when you see your molts, when you, if you catch them just as they've done them, they are still wet. They're, they're quite damp, wet almost. And this is because they secure this cuticle material, which basically forms a layer between the old skin and the new skin. And that's what makes it easy for them to actually flip it off like a glove. So what you can see there now is she is pulsating her body. And if you look at her abdomen, you can see there that it's starting to crinkle up. And that's because when a spider molts, it has to bust out of the old skin. And the, the very top of the abdomen splits also along the, the um, carapace. That splits away as well. And then what they do then is they will come out of it almost sort of backwards. So they literally force it off. Now, obviously, the new exoskeleton, which is the spider's new clothes, as we like to call them, is very, very soft at this point and needs to harden up. You can clearly see the white fangs there. They are very soft and very prone to damage at this stage. And this is why it's very important that you leave your spider alone. Never try and help a spider when it's molting. It can be very dangerous to them. Now an interesting point here is when we look at the um, the spider there and it's flexing its its legs to try and actually get this old skin off, and that is because a spider can contract its legs inwards mechanically, so muscles attached to the segments in the legs contract the legs inwards. But it can't, the muscles can't open the legs again. So the spider has to force blood into the legs to create that hydraulics to actually move the leg open again. So you imagine you can clench your fist, but you can't, your muscles, open your fist again. With a spider, it hasn't got the muscles to open the legs again. So it has to use hydraulics where it forces blood into the legs to push them forward. And that's how a spider opens its legs. So it brings them in and opens them out again. And you can see there now that they're all curled up. And this is because it's not got the fluid in the legs yet to force them open, which is what it's trying to do now. It's every time you see it do them little flutters, it's filling the legs with fluid. And this is how eventually it will fill that new exoskeleton. Now 
now this is what we took here what we're seeing here is about seven minutes of video this actually took around about three and a half hours you can clearly see the toes there you can see the hooks on the toes there very very prominent this is how a spider manages to be able to run on just about anything them hooks are very very sharp and you can they'll hook onto everything you can also see there the white fangs and you can see the dark fangs of the skin over to the right hand side of the picture this girl is going to take a long time in eventually once this uh, female was done it took her around about three weeks to fully harden up so don't be in any rush to try and feed your spider soon after molting you can see now that the legs are actually falling open this is because we're getting more and more fluid into those legs so they are in effect getting heavier which is what's opening them splaying the legs out you see there every little thrust the legs just drop open a little bit more this is a very tiring process for a spider and also a very dangerous one the spider is totally defenseless at this stage and for some weeks afterwards for an adult young spiders harden up much much quicker some can be hardened up within 24 hours from a sling they can be very very quick you see the legs there slowly dropping away they're filling with fluid another little thrust there you see the whole body thrusting this is all to push fluid into those legs now what we're going to do now we're going to drop down that's that was filmed in 20 times speed we now drop down to four times speed to actually catch her actually flicking over to the rightful upright position you'll see in a moment she will start reaching out there we go she's trying desperately she see see how she's actually got the fluid in the legs now so she can actually operate them and there she is in all her glory and as we said it still took some three weeks for her to fully fully harden up and this is when a spider grows once that exoskeleton is fully hard she can no longer grow anymore until she molts again and the whole process starts all over again well what did you make of that pretty neat weren't it it's not very often we manage to catch our spiders actually having a full a full molt um, quite often we catch them sort of in between now as we said earlier on it took around about three and a half hours for that to actually happen for the whole thing to go forward and um, hopefully we've managed to uh, explain some of the things that go on in a mole. Now I think it would be interesting for everyone, especially for beginners, to, um, to understand what goes on with the mole and, and what we can do to make it easier for the spider. Now um, there are a few myths going on with, uh, with molting and um, one of the major ones is about spraying your enclosure now up in the humidity in your enclosure does absolutely nothing nothing to help your spider molt it makes no difference to it whatsoever it doesn't make it softer or make it easier it does absolutely zilch now the reason being is because your spider is to all intents and purposes fully waterproof so that outside exoskeleton which is the the molt that they get rid of when they molt the outside skin of your spider is is impervious to water it cannot penetrate it in any way yeah and this is why your spider can't grow inside the skin that it lives in which is why they molt so when your spider becomes too large for its skin 
this is what produces the molt. It puts it into that, it changes the hormones in the spider, and it tells the spider it's time to change its clothes. It needs a new skin. Now, all of the growing is done. Once that spider pulls out of that skin, he is in actual fact the same size as the skin he's just left. But as he starts to pump fluids into the new exoskeleton, the new exoskeleton is pliable. And that actually expands as he pumps all that uh, blood and fluid into the legs and into the body, the skin expands. Now once it dries and it sets hard, that spider can no longer grow anymore. That is as far as it can grow until hormones tell it again it's time to get a new set of clothes. And this, and this is how it goes on. So when your spider is trying to molt and it's doing it, and you often hear people say, oh, spray your enclosure, it does this, it does that. It does absolutely nothing. You're, it cannot take on fluid. So it's very, very important that when your spider is coming up, you know, during its lifetime, that you actually keep your spider hydrated. Spraying your enclosure does not hydrate your spider. Food hydrates your spider. Drinking water hydrates your spider. Yeah? So you always make sure, this is why it's very important, you always have a water bowl with fresh water inside your enclosures. Now, we do sometimes see people, you know, you'll get someone put up a picture of a, uh, an enclosure, no water in the, in the water bowl. It's not the end of the world. As long as your spider has got water in there, say 80% of the time, you are fine. You know, don't worry if your water bowl dries out, just top it up. It's not the end of the world. Now, your spider will take on as much water as it wants through drinking, and you'll often see them. We've put videos up before now with our spiders drinking from their water bowls, and they're taking on fluid all the time, and this is what keeps your spider hydrated. Again, the same with the food. This is why it's important that we gut load our food, we feed all of our roaches and our crickets, we make sure they're well fed, because we want all that nutrients and all that fluid that they get through the fresh greens and things like that. They then pass that onto your spider. And this is what keeps your spider hydrated. So having a humid environment or a dry environment doesn't make any difference in that respect. Very, very important. Now, one of the other things you'll know is um, when your spider is coming up to what we call pre molt this is when quite often, especially with terrestrial spiders, you'll see their bums will go bald, bald, their abdomen. You will see them go shiny. They change color. Quite often they go um, really dark, really shiny, and, oh, excuse me, and this is what we call pre molt Now, in arboreal spiders, you don't tend to see this. They tend to literally remain almost the same as you've seen them all the time. So you don't get that indication, that pre molt indication that you do with like a terrestrial spider. All your brachypelmas, things like that, they show it really, really well. It's very, very obvious. So... When they go into this pre molt quite often, probably 90% of spiders will stop feeding and they'll start becoming sluggish, they'll start hiding away. If it's an arboreal spider, nine times out of 10, it will disappear to its favorite resting place, maybe behind a piece of bark or, or wherever. If it's a, an avic, it will have a, a web curtain. It will hide in there and quite often they will seal this off you often see this with big spiders, your therophosis, your stermis, blondies. They will dig a burrow and they will, all your fossorial spiders are the same. They will dig a burrow and they will seal it off. They'll web up the entrance and you can't get in there. It's completely sealed. Now, the reason they do this is because when they molt, it's a very, very dangerous time. And they're, they're at the mercy of everything. They can be predated on by just about anything when they're molting. Very, very delicate. So... They seal their, their homes off so that you can't get in there. Now, quite often we get people say, my spider's disappeared for a week, it's not fed. You know, they're panicking. It doesn't matter. We have spiders here, especially some of the larger spiders, they can disappear for two, three months, four months at a time. They'll seal off. pre molt in some spiders can take a very, very long time. Other spiders it can be done in a matter of a couple of weeks. But don't get worried if your spider vanishes. And yes, it's not come out for a drink, it's not come out for any food, but it's entirely fine. 
hormones has kicked in, it's told it it's time to molt, and that is what that spider is doing. The most important thing is, is you leave it well alone. You know, there's there's a common misconception in the in the hobby that spiders need to feed every week. You know, every week of the year they must be feeding. Spiders can go an awful long time about feeding. As long as they've got the body weight to start with and they're in good health, they've got everything they need to go through the molt without any assistance from us. It's very important that we do not touch them. You know, we often see um, cases on Facebook and things, you know, I help my spider molt. It's the worst thing you could ever do. You know, it's far better just to leave your spider alone, let it do its own thing, and then it will sort itself out. Just, just leave them well alone. Now, once they have actually molted, and we do get them come out again, and we see them start moving them around, don't be too keen to feed. Now, like we say, he might have been locked away for two or three months. you think he's starving, wouldn't you? He's not. He's not hungry. He needs to harden up. Now, with the girl in the video, you would have seen there, it took her roughly three and a half, nearly four weeks to fully harden up. Now, by this, we mean that her exoskeleton is properly formed and set, and her fangs have changed colour. You would have seen in the video they were white. When they're white like that, they're very soft, pliable. We need them to go dark black, you know? And then when they go black and shiny, we know that they are fully hard, which means she can now use them to catch her food. She can't use them to catch her food when they're pliable. They can damage them, and then you've got problems. So again, this is why we leave them alone. Very important, leave them alone. Now, when they are fully hardened up, then we can introduce some food. But like I say, don't be in any rush. The larger the spider, the longer it takes for this process to finalize and finish itself. With young slings, it can be anything from 24 hours, 36 hours, they are fully done, hard, ready to feed again. With your bigger spiders, there's an awful lot more going on and it takes a lot longer to achieve it. So just try and relax. If your spider's going in, don't panic. Remember what we've said, try and relax and just let nature take its course. It's very, very important. And it doesn't matter, once they lock themselves away, fresh water, things like that, don't worry about it. Just, just leave them be. And whatever you do, don't try and feed them. Loose food in your enclosure with a molting spider can be dangerous. So remember, they can be predated on by just about anything. So we have to be very, very careful. Right. I think that's covered some of the misconceptions that we see with molting. And um, hopefully you'll all get a chance to catch your own spiders doing exactly that. It's a fascinating thing to watch firsthand. Right. I hope you enjoyed that. And I hope maybe we've got, got a few, few little myths out of the way. And um, hope you enjoyed everything else. So, I shall, um, I think we've done it. We've done it, camera lady? Yeah. We've covered it, haven't we? Right. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. And don't forget, be calm, be gentle, and love your spiders. And I'll see you soon, guys.